The European Commission will this month propose an EU-wide digital certificate providing proof of a COVID-19 vaccination that could allow Europeans to travel more widely over the summer. And for more on this, we're joined now by Billy Kelleher, Fianna Fáil MEP and Professor Sam McConkie, Infectious Disease Specialist at the Royal College of Surgeons. I'll come to you first, Billy, if I may. Do you believe this is a good idea? Well, I believe, yes, it should be done. It should be put in place. I mean, we still have to clarify and get a detailed analysis on whether or not there's transmission of the infection from people who have been vaccinated. And that needs to be um, analysed and assessed with all the data that's, being, that's coming now because of the role of the vaccination programme. But we should still put it in place. Um, it clearly is not going to work to have a situation where people will be, you know, walking around with bits of paper in their pockets, uh, PDF forms, screenshots showing that they have been vaccinated or that they're after a PCR test. Uh, I recently travelled through an airport and it was it was chaotic, uh, even though there was only about 40 or 50 people getting on the plane because they were all showing different forms to identify that they had a PCR test. Uh, so, like, we do need to put a uniform certificate system in place so that it is uh, interoperable across all the European countries and possibly even, you know, discussions with the UK, America and others as well. And then, you know, if you look at what's happening in Europe already, I mean, Greece are doing a bilateral with Israel. Uh, the Italians have already said that Sardinia, there, an island off their coast, uh, will be a vaccine-only uh, tourist destination. Uh, Portugal and Spain are also looking at these things. So it is happening on a member state level. And I just believe that at the European level, that is the competency around the freedom of movement of people. And we should put in place that system. OK, let, let me let me bring in Professor Sam McConkey. Sam, is Billy right? Do we need to put this in place? Will it, will it facilitate travel? And even if things like transmissibility aren't known at the moment, we set this thing up in the hope that perhaps this will all work out OK? Yeah, well, I think uh, Billy hit the nail on the head that we need to find out, does it work? Is it effective? And do the vaccines really prevent transmission well enough to make it safe for people who have been vaccinated to travel from one country to another? We don't really know that yet. To use a simple metaphor, it's a bit like deciding to build a bridge and you don't know if the bridge will stay up or not uh, when you decide to build it. And my, my view is, you're, you know, they used to do that with old cathedrals in the medieval times and some of them fell down and some of them didn't. But now we use models and plans and science and engineering to be fairly confident that our bridges will stay up before we build them. So I think we need the, the data first that this works and then put it in place. It's not so difficult to put in place quickly because there's a similar system for yellow fever. Many of us who travel yeah. all over the world, you get a yellow fever international certificate. I have it with my passport and they're recognised all over the world so there's already a model for this and it could be it has been done before with bits of paper and it could be done electronically so I think there are ways of doing this quickly if it works but that's the whole question does it work because doing something that doesn't work and falls down like a cathedral there's no sense Okay and, and Sam just on that, that issue of transmissibility we're not too sure how, how vaccines affect it at the moment, that's true. But we do have good data to suggest that vaccines are very good on preventing serious illness and also death. So, so therefore, if you're moving to an area of high vaccination and if you're vaccinated, even if you were to transmit COVID, it becomes a much less serious disease. Does, does that count for nothing? Unfortunately, in the highly vaccinated area you're going to, there will be, you know, 5 or 10% of people who haven't got the vaccine. There'll be maybe 10% who got the vaccine but didn't respond to it for one reason or another. And those will typically be the most vulnerable, the elderly, the people on chemotherapy, people on dialysis, and, and they will still potentially be susceptible, especially now when we've more... Uh, transmissible variants, even if there's just, you know, 10 or 15% of the population unvaccinated. Children, as we know, not all the vaccines are suitable for children, so they could be a reservoir where it keeps spreading. So the whole mantra now is to try and keep it out, especially with these, you know, variants, P1 variant, B117 variant, because we're worried that they may even escape vaccination. So there is an international effort to try and, you know, uh, have hotel quarantine so people can travel in, but have to do sensible things to prevent spreading it in the country they're arriving in. OK, so Billy, what do you say to that? We don't know about transmissibility and therefore the movement of people is still an issue irrespective of vaccine rates within, within the European Union. Yes, I, I agree with all of that. But I mean, first and foremost, I mean, you know, we must wait for that data to come in. That has been assessed. Uh, you have countries like uh, Israel that have over 50% of their population um, vaccinated. There is evidence to suggest that it does uh, reduce transmissibility. But I mean, I'm not the... Uh, epidemiologist, I'm not a virologist, I'm, I'm not the medic, but all I'm pointing out is from a political perspective, we should put in place um, a vaccination certificate programme that would identify people who have had the vaccine, also people whose uh, PCR test, for example. So in other words, if you get a PCR test in Ireland, then you, you're allowed to travel to France. That there's some way of uh, authenticity, uh, being able to prove 
your your after vaccination program. I saw it in the airport, uh, Kira. Like people were taking out bits of paper. They were showing screenshots. They were showing emails. I could hear people uh, ringing home yeah. asking them to change the name on, on, on the email. It was chaotic. And the idea that we can't just use the technology, put it in place. So some kind of standardisation. Is, yes. And like uh, countries are looking at this. I mean, Spain and Italy are already uh, talking about Portugal. Are Greece have done a bilateral with Israel. So, I mean, if we are to be effective, if the UK decided to do this as well, well, then that could put us in a difficult yeah. position as well. So we should at least embrace it and encourage it and use it in the event of uh, the signs coming in and the evidence coming in about the uh, reductions in transmissibility of the COVID-19 by people who have been vaccinated. Yeah, my understanding is the EU are looking at, at creating a record of vaccination, PCR test results and also a history of previous infections so that there would be some kind of a standardised thing. Can I ask you, Sam, is one of the concerns around all of this is that we don't know how long immunity might last post-vaccination and you could have been vaccinated maybe as we go forward, you could, maybe you were vaccinated six months ago or 12 months ago or 18 months ago and you may no longer be immune. Is, is that a concern? Yeah, so we know that people who've had previous SARS in the UK were quite well protected for six months from getting SARS-CoV-2 again. And the vaccine data is all fairly fresh from Israel and, and, and Scotland. And it certainly it seems to protect for three months at least. And I'm optimistic that it will be for longer than that, maybe even up to a year. But we, we, we really don't have that data over three months. So things like a PCR test, as we've just heard talking about, that's true at the time you had it and it's very, very sensitive. But if you're infected a day later, then of course you could be infectious three days after that. So four days after your PCR test, it doesn't mean yeah. that much if you've been circulating in an open environment. Whereas, you're right, the vaccine cert, if, if we know the vaccine is effective for transmission, maybe for six months so or a year, that, that could be useful to And there is a model for that, as I said, with yellow fever that's worked very well yeah. for 40 or 50 years. So still a lot of unknowns. 